Well, hey, Internet. Welcome to my farm. So this is Steve at Thousand Year Home. So out here I'm doing two things simultaneously. I'm doing a restorative agriculture uh, in the middle of a drought. That has not been very successful, but I will still talk about the things that worked. And uh, I'm also building a shipping container home, my last retirement home. Uh, all hand cut timbers, uh, naturally get gathered materials from the homestead. I'm gonna take uh, two shipping container homes and I'm gonna wrap them in adobe earth bag around the outside. Uh, and thus make it look like a Santa Fe Mission Adobe style home. Here in Central Texas, that'll give me six or 800,000 uh, BTU value in uh, insulation. Uh, that's the heat, right? Uh, and in fact, uh, I think there should be a third position of heat. They talk about heat stroke, you're a dead man. Heat exhaustion, eh, you might get back. But I also believe there's uh, another theory. First step is heat fatigue, and, and that is what I have, heat fatigue. And It's 95, I saw in the nation that it said first snow <laughs> across the nation, and I'm uh, 95 right now. And I've gotta tell you, it is very hard. Uh, it's been triple digits all summer long, uh, no rain, and uh, I have got heat, heat fatigue where I just it's hard for me to get out and do things but I have got a lot done for September I brought in a new horse and trained him blaze I made a lot of fire breaks there had been a wildfire right next to me so I spent a lot of time cleaning the land uh, going back to the restorative agriculture and uh, it rains starting in October and that's a day away October's a day away and I for those of you who have been following the channel this it was a little dry hole before I got one day of rain <laughs> actually one hour of rain and it was two inches and it filled it up it's fairly deep and there's a lot of little frogs in there still if I waded down in there, it would be up to my waist. So what I'm trying to do is dig this pond out. Now, I have actually had this as a pond. It has been all filled up here before, uh, but it's not right now. I might put some pictures in if I can find them. We'll find out. So uh, a couple of different things. I've got this old sack creek that was underneath the connex that had picked up a lot of moisture. So I had uh, cleared, out the, uh, cleared out the culvert and uh, had built up the bottom and uh, those are lumps of concrete in there from other bags so i'm going to overtop that today but first i need to put some uh, uh rebar in there and i have some old rebar so i'm going to go get my rebar cutter and cut that out and then i'm going to stack uh sacrete on here i'm going to cut out that one branch that's overhanging uh we'll see how much i can get done in this heat it really is something else it's something fierce so i work a little bit and then i quit a little bit so. but september uh i got my vaccinations updated that put me out for a little bit i didn't feel real good about that leah had surgery that put her out for a little bit but i went and visited you know and uh but i broke a horse i got a horse and got them all tamed up and uh, cleared a lot of land I was successful but um, I need to get back in the house but uh, let me because I've got rain coming in about four days see if I can finish up that particular little pond to get it a little deeper and um, fill up the driveway as well and I'll put you guys on stop motion while I do that and I've got some ideas for uh, for that driveway so every bridge that you cross over is uh, packed earth but they put a, a fabric in between the layers of dirt and it's called structural earth is what it's called and uh, so I have got some landscaping fabric I've got some old tarps out here I've got uh, some old carpets uh, uh, but I'm going to that particular spot that's real low and then I'm going to be filling in with clay I'm going to go ahead and put uh, landscape fabric down on it and then a little sand on the top soil and I'm hoping that it hardens that up and uh, gets me through and then I'm done with that part of the drive so that's what I'm going to be working on today and I will put you on stop motion while I do that and it is toasty warm out here so I'll do a little bit quit a little bit do a little bit quit a little bit because uh, I am all worn out with the heat so all right let me see get going on this thing all right well it's evening time the temperature's down let me go ahead and continue on with this little project which basically when I cut this corner, uh, sometimes I cut it and a wheel drops in, as I mentioned. So uh, the pipe, you know, they come in known, known lengths and uh, I guess I needed a longer one. But I like that a little tiny uh, decorative path in there. It does collect water down in there. So 
But let me uh, go ahead, I brought the, uh, the angle iron that I'll need, and let me just go ahead and finish making that uh, concrete bridge there. So all of that was just leftovers that uh, have been sitting here about a year. The bags are already getting hard. But I figure that's a good repurposing. Self-reliance, I guess, right? And those we who are off grid, I, we get into this whole mindset of how do we do stuff? Uh, that's uh, cost effective and environmentally sound and obviously repurposing something that was left over is a good answer to that. I might get a sledgehammer. Let me get that. Be right back. bar that I picked up. Now I know if I put a tractor tire on that, it, it'll hold. It'll hold.
So don't anybody worry that I've have used good concrete for that. In fact, I had bought the uh, the uh, ruined concrete from Lowe's when I first got these shipping containers. My idea was to pick them up and set a set them on an old bag of cement and slowly lift them up that way. I didn't end up having to do that because my floor jack was strong enough to get them up as high as I wanted for a cement block. So these have been sitting here for a while, but I like that. I think that's a That'll work in just fine. Now I'll go get some, uh, I'll go get my bucket on here. I'll swap that pellet and fill in some dirt. Cut that low branch out of there. It is dead when you follow it up. There's nothing, no life in it. So do some pruning and uh, get that all leveled out then. So I'll raise it up and I'll cover that with uh, clay down over into the, uh, you know, make this a path that's up. And so when it floods, this will stay dry and it might be a secondary avenue if something happens to that part of the drive. But I'm getting that part of the drive, so I think I'm in good shape. All right, let me do a little bit of cutting. All right, so now I'm going to cut that tree out of there. It's completely dead, as I showed you earlier, and it's so low that it barely clears my tractor. And if I build this area up a little bit, then it'll make that uh, even more problematic. And that's my intention as I dig that pond. I'll build up my drive in. I'll build up this. Let me build this up a little bit. Fill that up and you won't even see the bags when I'm done with it. It'll be all natural. It gives me an extra three foot for me to pull a tractor around there without feeling the tire drop in. Mission accomplished. I took care of some old bags that I had underneath the, tra uh, the trailer, the Connex shipping container. And I'm still working on this little pond. <laughs> well, that'll do. I had a full day today. Thank you. This is Steve at Thousand Year Homes. Thank you for joining me. Like, subscribe. Bye-bye.